Hello, my people. Welcome to the SCORE channel. Today, I'm going to give you an overview of all the equipment that I use to make my videos, just in case you were ever wondering like what it takes to get started with the channel, what you might want to have, and I'm going to show you a little bit of how my space works as well. Uh, so I just want to start off by talking about the equipment that I use pretty much everywhere, and I'm going to give you some examples of some of the videos that I've used this stuff in. Right here, what you're seeing on the table is honestly like 99% of my equipment, and this is what gets me through the majority of my videos. So starting with this extremely important lavalier mic, uh, this guy has a condenser on it, um, and that condenser is very helpful because it produces much better sound quality. All you need is a mic with an inline condenser like this. It runs off of a button cell battery. Twisty ties are your friend. They keep your uh, cables from getting tangled up when you throw them in a bag. Highly recommend twisty ties. So yeah, this is how I do almost all my interviews. Uh, I hook somebody up to this lav mic. I'm currently using my backup lav mic. When I use student interviews, for example, I just ask them to hold this and it works really well. This is really all you need for good audio. You can get a lot. This maybe only cost me $30. It was a really good deal. And so I wanna talk a little bit about the lights that I use both at home and also while I'm at you know locations, when I'm shooting on location at different universities. These guys right here make up the bulk of my lighting kit, just these three very small lights. This is an Aperture M7. This Aperture light is only for white light or yellow light. It only does those colors. And I like to just mount it to the top of the camera when I'm shooting, especially if I'm shooting at night and I'm just kind of doing like walk and shoot. It's really, really effective. It lights up the subject, makes them look really good. Now these guys are awesome. These are Aperture lights also, although they are on Manfrotto stands. And you'll see here that they come in all sorts of colors. These are RGB lights. So I can just adjust these using a scroll wheel on the side, which is great. Uh, I can drop the intensity as well, so they're not quite as bright, because I see they're really washing everything out here. So you can see they're just RGB lights. And I can also control them from my phone. So the two of these can be synchronized on my phone. Um, I love using these when I do my interviews with people because I like to set them up with like the colors of the university. So if you pay attention to my university videos, you'll notice, especially like near the hands of the person talking, because I place these lights on the table, they tend to have a color tone to them that comes from these lights. I find it to be a really nice touch and um, the lights themselves are pretty affordable. I think I only paid about $80 per light. They also are magnetic on the back, so you can sometimes cr stick them to creative locations. And I bought these stands for like 20 bucks, I think. Uh, they, they are very compact, which is nice if you just wanna pack them up. I'm gonna show you how I pack these up too. And uh, so having two of these has been great. I kinda want a third one. Um, it, that I might use to replace this. But for now, this gets almost everything done. The only stuff that I don't do, uh, the only time that doesn't do enough is when I film at home. And I actually have the most ghetto lighting set up here. Uh, these are like construction lights. These are lights you would get if you were doing like construction site work or roadside work. Very strong LED panels. Um, I'll plug this in real quick so you can see what I mean. And you'll see just how much it lights up this room. Yeah, like that is blinding. Like if I look into that, it's gonna take my eyes off. And I like to put another one here uh, that actually lights up the wall behind me, which is getting due for a new coat of paint, as you can see. But um, it has a nice little glow, you know, behind me to where I'm, where I'm sitting. And I just like that. I don't usually bring these lights with me when I travel. Uh, these are just sort of used at home and they're very effective. They're also extremely cheap. So if you're just looking for some like cheap lighting for the house, I would recommend those construction lights. Like they only cost me, I think about 50 bucks for the pair and they, they light up the whole house. In addition, I've thought about that when I got these lights, these are actually Philip Hughes in the house and in the lamp. Um, so I can adjust the colors of those as well using an app. And that's also kind of convenient. So that covers my lighting. I want to get into the camera side of things now. So the camera that I use, is this guy right here. This is a Panasonic G7. It's a $500 camera brand new with a kit lens. And it does 4K 30p video, which is great if you want to shoot 4K on a budget. I don't normally shoot 4K. Um, there are times where I do, but because it makes the files much larger, much more difficult to manipulate, you know, you can use proxies. That's a whole other process I could teach you about, but um, it's, it's a lot easier to manipulate 1080 footage. So I usually record in 1080 30p. However, 
there are times where 4K is handy because it lets you zoom in without losing quality. So there are certain situations where I have shot videos in 4K and then only output 1080. A good example of that was my Elmhurst video. Uh, when I interviewed the two people at Elmhurst, I wasn't expecting to interview two people. And so I wanted to be able to zoom in on each of them without losing video quality, so I shot that in 4K. The reason I love this camera is because it's really good at video. It takes very, very good video and it's extremely lightweight. Like I can go around with this all day. Only way, it doesn't even weigh a couple of pounds, even with attachments right now, it's, it's still very light. Um, the other thing that's great about it is that as a fully articulating screen, this was a must for me because when I first had a dream of starting a channel back in 2017, well before score, I knew I was gonna be doing this on my own. And so being able to like flip out the screen and then see myself, hello, is important. I need to be able to see what I'm doing. Fully articulating screen, it's also a touch screen. So that's just also great too. Like I can touch and open up different menus and stuff and that's just great. Um, so this is a really good camera for the price. I think it gets a lot of things done. Where it sucks is autofocus. If you've watched a lot of my videos, you know this is true. I've lost focus on a few people. I usually keep it in manual. But, you know, there's times where you just wish the autofocus would work well. And that's kind of why I want to upgrade down the road. Now, lenses, on the other hand, are a whole other ball game. So, I typically shoot almost everything on this 25 millimeter prime lens. It does not zoom. It is, this has a little uh, guard that I usually put on when I'm filming like this. This lens is great. It is crystal clear, it is fast, which means it lets in lots of light. It's really good for low light applications. The downside of that lens is that it does not have any zoom and it does not have any image stabilization, which is something that this kit lens does have. And because the kit lens goes to a smaller focal length, I can get this all the way down to 14 millimeter, then it'll get a much wider shot. And I used this also in that Elmhurst video because I could not fit two people in frame in a small conference room using this lens. If you're gonna do video and you're gonna go on different locations and you don't have control over your surroundings, I highly recommend that you get a lens that can adapt to different circumstances. That is why I always bring this with me. Now, I also have a much longer lens that goes from 40 all the way out to 150 and it looks kind of impressive while doing it. This is an Olympus lens, it's compatible. It just doesn't have image stabilization. It's pretty cheap, it's not very fast. Good for daytime long distance shots, but I really don't use it that much. Um, I bought it because it was 100 bucks and I didn't want to not have it. But honestly, um, I think I've only used it for like one or two shoots. I've mostly used it for still photography when I'm just screwing around. I have two items that I use when I'm handling the camera. The first is my gimbal. This is the RSC2, uh, the Ronin. It is for smaller cameras, uh, smaller payloads, I think up to five pounds, which is more than enough for what I have. Um, but this gimbal has been the greatest addition to my footage at all. Uh, it, it's incredible. I will show you real quick kind of how that looks when it's mounted. The Gimbal stabilizes the camera considerably. I actually was just doing the how to study in Japan video and I had some video footage where I just walked around and like took videos with this in my hand. And the difference between just walking around with this like this and using this is incredible. This footage by hand is basically unusable. This is clean as hell, it is so good. Camera mounted now, like you can kind of see more what this looks like when it's in action. We've got the camera mounted to the gimbal right now with the light, which does force me to kind of push this plate a little further back, but it does clear, it does work. Uh, and so it'll keep it nice and steady no matter what I do, no matter where I move it, uh, it'll turn. I also, this cable's not plugged in, but I can use that cable to like control the shutter. So I can just tap the red button down here and I'll be able to start taking videos without having to touch the camera, which is pretty great. Um, they have other systems for this too, for like audio and focus and stuff that more advanced cameras can take advantage of. But for my purposes, this is perfectly fine. So the gimbal really does a lot of my heavy lifting. And once I'm on the road, my camera pretty much never leaves this gimbal. Like I am permanently attached to this thing and I go out and I get my work done. And then if I do need to switch to the tripod, it's pretty easy. Cause I can literally just like pop this, uh, plate out of here, there's a little button on the front, unlatch it, pull it out, and I can drop that right into here using the other plate that's on the back of that and we'll be good to go. So one of the things I really wanted to get 
before I went up to the States was a drone. And uh, for my trip in summer of 2021, when I went to Pittsburgh and other places, I had a drone just like this. Um, actually, I had this exact drone after Pittsburgh. This is the second drone that we've had here at SCORE. <laughs> um, I flew the first one into a building by accident. Oops. Let me just show you a little bit of what this looks like. So uh, this is the Mavic Mini 2. The three that's coming out looks like it's gonna be amazing. But basically, I just flipped this out, uh, stuff a battery into the back here. It's already got one in there and a memory card slot. And literally, we're good to go. I control this from my phone using the DJI controller. And this thing has been responsible for getting a ton of great shots. I am looking forward to using it more. It's, it's a really good piece of equipment, very lightweight, fits seamlessly into my kit. And it comes with a pack of batteries, which is also awesome because as you're charging this, you can plug something else into this and it will charge that too. So if it finishes charging the batteries, it'll just feed power out of here to another device. And you can even link like multiple battery banks. I have two and um, that's really convenient. Saves on plugs because that's a whole other problem is charging all this crap. I think this might be quietly the most important piece of equipment that I have. Uh, this backpack has revolutionized my work because there's a place for everything. So all of these panels, like you can put them wherever you want. They're all Velcro, everything's Velcro in here. So I have just sort of customized this so that I can put all my essential equipment right into this pocket. So I'll show you what I mean. Um, if I take the drone, for example, and I just start packing it up, you know, just do it one handed even, works just fine. Uh, the drone sits down in here. Put that down over top of it. Uh, this lens, the one that I always bring with me, goes down in here. And again, since I can just sort of tighten that, it's not gonna get bounced around, it's not gonna go anywhere. Bring down this flap. The lights. The lights go in here like so. It's a little snug, but that's okay. So right there, I got my lights. I can uh, slide this battery pack in right here. And now I've got my drone, my lighting, and a lens all in here. Now the other stuff gets broken down a little bit. I always take out this uh, extension and the base and I slide that into here. It just goes in there. Um, and the audio goes into one of the pockets as well. And literally I can just put this on my back and be good to go. And that's pretty much how I do most of my videos. There are some other things I would recommend you get if you are thinking about doing something like this. Um, I have an entire section of this just dedicated to cleaning products. You really need to keep yourself clean. Um, microfiber cloths, these little like tooth pick things that are like wire cleaners are really useful. Oh, hey, look, there's a scorecards. Um, this little guy blows air. I got another brush like this too. Uh, lens cleaning solution, just all the stuff you need to keep your stuff clean. Because uh, when you're out and about, you do get dirty and it's something that you won't notice until you're at home editing footage when it's way too late. Up here, I usually keep extra batteries. I keep memory cards in this pocket as well. I do have a bunch of those because you need a bunch of those. Um, in here, we got more cables. There's just like a million different cables for every possible scenario. So whatever the case may be, cables. And yeah, in here, I'm generally just putting the stand for this. And then the gimbal itself I will put that in this side pocket. And normally I would take off like the light and some of the other things just so that this isn't banging around as much and that it isn't as heavy. But this is basically all I gotta do. I can literally just tuck this in here. Um, this sort of stretchy part just sort of holds the base in. This part grabs onto the top and it won't go anywhere. Like I'll, I can move it around. You know, the camera's gonna stay put. Like I feel confident. Um, it's definitely like, like I said, I would take some of the extra things off to make it a little lighter and a little safer for moving around. But that's basically how I'm going from point A to point B. And then as soon as I get there, I just unclip this, unlock the gimbal, put in the extension, which is now in the bag, and we're good to go. I also wanted to show you real quick how I've been filming this since my camera is sitting right here. I'm actually using my DJI phone gimbal. Uh, this guy, I actually got it for free, funny enough. Uh, it was a contest because I bought the drone. I got entered into a contest and then won this. Uh, so this is really useful for just like quick on the go stuff because my phone clips right into here with a magnet. I use this from time to time on set. I don't always bring it with me, honestly. Um, it's just sometimes it's useful if you need to use your phone to record stuff and you're on the go, good for vlogging. 
Good for like, for example, that success story video that I did with Juliana, I used this because I didn't want to bring the whole kit into a Starbucks. Um, this was simple enough and it gets the job done. So I use this quite a bit for little things here and there. Uh, it does a really good job of stabilizing video and I can control everything from my phone or on here as well. Uh, so that's kind of the only other piece to the puzzle. So that my people is basically all of the equipment that I use to get my videos done um, the other thing that's really important is computing and I have a really good computer that's able to process all of this footage But even if you don't you can still make good quality videos with a crappy computer What matters is the video coming in this right here is the most important thing for determining your video quality and This right here for your sound quality Lighting is essential and having a way to take all of this stuff with you if you're gonna shoot on location is important so if you can do all those things you can really make videos really, really easily without spending a ton of money. So I'm pretty pleased with what we've put together so far. I'm looking forward to doing some upgrades as we make some money, hopefully someday on this channel. Uh, but for now, that's my equipment. Thank you for watching. Hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below and I'll see you next week.